Hello everyone, Sir Jellybean here and we're back with another Call to Arms Gates of Hell Osprey tutorial. And this time we're talking Russian tank destroyers and assault guns. So we obviously did a similar video with the Germans, it's now the Russians turn. So, I must stress this again, what is the main thing between these and a normal tank? The lack of a turret, a moving turret. They have that main forward facing main weapon and, like I must stress again, if the vehicle is mobilised, they had very limited traverse. As you can see, you can go so far right or so far left, obviously up and down. So, they are more vulnerable than normal tanks. Now, I'll say it again like I did in the other video. These weapons, a lot of them are more support based weapons. So, for instance, things like your IS, your SG-122 and stuff like your IS-152 and your SG-152. They can take on main tanks, obviously. They're very powerful weapons. These are basically rolling howitzers. And these actually have the largest um, mobile kind of artillery based weapons. You know, the Germans had the 15 centimeters, but these are 152 millimeter. And they're used for like bunker busting, but they can obviously rip a tank, tiger tank to pieces, especially things like your yeah, ISU 122S and stuff like your SU 100 with your 130mm cannon. So these are big guys, especially the Russians. The Russians tend to go straight from really light stuff to really heavy stuff. Now, obviously, even though just because of the support weapons are not too light, the armor, one good thing about the Russian stuff, I'll just stress, these are based off the T 34 chassis and they are pretty tough, as you can see. 10 to 75 armor, but they have that. Like, good slope at the front and they're quite well built they are quite light on the sides but frontally they are better than the German ones in my opinion they're better put together and when you get to the bigger stuff though these are quite vulnerable because of the sheer size of them obviously they're quite high build but they still are pretty well armoured especially stuff like your um, ISU variants they do have some tough armour on them and the Dushka does help out so we'll start from the small stuff and just go through them so actually the Zist is probably the smallest the Zist 30 this thing has a very powerful 57mm gun as well, so don't discount the anti-tank bit power of it. Obviously these first two, like the German cat parts, open topped and lightly armoured. They're very thin skinned, especially the this. And the SU-76, which is more of a self-propelled gun, but in this game does play the anti-tank role, is really effective, especially early on, but vulnerable to mortars, grenades, infantry, everything. And as you can see with these guns, we'll just um, show you them. No machine gun, and this does have a small machine gun there. But still very vulnerable to infantry, especially these. So do be careful with them. But great support weapons, especially this SU-76. It's got good penetration. It's got a powerful gun. Powerful than the T-34, actually. And the Zeus with that 57mm, is very powerful. This thing is even a threat to medium German tanks and Finnish tanks. So um, definitely do not discount the Zeus there, even though it looks... You know, basically, it's pretty garbage. It's basically a... I believe it's the... Uh, I can't remember what tank chassis, but it reminds me of the... Uh, what is it, the tankette with the gun stuck on it. So yeah, it's very very light and vulnerable, but they are pretty good support elements. I would say the Zis more falls into a tank destroyer, whereas the self-propelled gun is, you know, it's like a bunker buster slash kind of light artillery support. But two decent things, definitely think about using them. Then we'll get on to the SU series, which obviously these do work fantastic with T-34. The main thing is, it's the power of the weapon. So you've got that 85mm eight, long barrel on the SU-85M, if you look at the ammunition types, it's got high X, it's armor piercing composite rigid, armor piercing high explosive blast cap, and armor piercing high explosive. So you've got a ton of anti tank no, rounds and some high X bunker busting. And just to show the ammo on these, these only have armor piercing high X, not very many rounds on that. This thing comes with a full complement of armor piercing, high explosives, and high explosive anti tank. So that's a very good variation there. And unlike most of the T34s, all these come with various ammo. So, for instance, it's got high explosives, armor piercing high explosive blast cap, armor piercing high explosive, and even the big lad, the 122mm, you've got your high explosives and your high explosive anti tank. And on that thing, it's absolutely de deadly. I can't remember the actual penetration of the high explosive anti tank, it, but it can take targets down for it that way. It's very powerful. And this is actually probably my favourite tank, the um, SU 122. I'm just going to fire around to show you. Uh, it's a bit weird how the gun aims. It's not got the best kind of traverse, I think, sometimes. The range is, I believe, about 160. I may be wrong on that. No, no. It's definitely it was 190. Jesus, I am wrong. But just look at the power of it. It's the reload speed. The thing isn't too bad for reloading. It's about, I think it's about 9 or 10 seconds, but it's pretty good. And it's my favourite kind of support weapon on the Russian side. Now, where I was going with the other ones, even yes, your 85N has got very powerful long barrel gun. Great for, you know, tank. This is, in my opinion, a proper tank destroyer. 
it comes in, it's pretty fast at 50 miles, 50 speed as you can see, oh, I've immobilised it. <sighs> Is it turned on? Right, now it's turned on. The thing can be quite nippy, it's quite good at turning, but at 50 speed this thing can quickly launch up, now fire at his tier target, Bye. put a round straight in. And it's armoured enough to survive, the only disadvantage, no quacks or machine gun, or even a you know, pin tool mounted so it's very vulnerable. This is the same with your SU-100, and same with your 122. So they are really vulnerable to those infantry that can kind of get up close. Obviously the SU-100 is a heavy tank killer. This thing also being very nippy at 50 speed, and this one's 55 speed, so it's a little bit quicker. So these, I think these actually fill the tank throw roll better than the German counterparts like the Stug. So these are really good support units, and I've got to say the SU-100, I use it if I do, when I do play the Russians, not that often, but I use this through every stage of the battlefield that I can get in. Even when you get things like the IS series, I always like to bring these. And the SU-122, in my opinion, is your best kind of supporting bunker busting destroying weapon it's a bit like the brum bar for the russians but in my opinion it's got a better layout and it's a bit harder to kill because it's lower and it's got that good sloped armor then we get on to the big lads first we've got the isu 122s obviously this thing is quite slow you know, at 38 it's not really slow but the only bad thing about the is series you know decent front armor those side armor not very you know it's quite flat and obviously very kind of large you know back engine space I always find they get, seem to get decrewed, uh, not decrewed, um, immobilised really quick. Obviously the saving grace of this thing is that ridiculously powerful gun. It is very strong, very powerful. The thing will detonate, and obviously armour piercing wise, it's got those armour piercing high explosive blast cap and high explosives. You can, you can do bunker busting, and the 50 caliber machine gun is deadly. This thing can even penetrate light vehicles, shred infantry, and it'll take down the aircraft. And the 50 caliber, obviously being on the ISU-152 as well, is a great support weapon. Now the ISU-152 has obviously got a massive main gun. It's got your armor piercing rounds and your high explosives. This thing, it's a house, it's a artillery piece. But those armor piercing rounds will also decimate tanks. You know, it's a really deadly vehicle, but it suffers like all these bigger ones on the Russian side. They're kind of too big, but unlike the German ones, they don't get the armor with it. Is he firing? Was it just... What the hell? That's, was it just smoke going out? Very strange. <laughs> but yeah, it, they don't have the armour of the German counterparts. And the speed's not terrible. It's about 30, you know, that's 43, that gets a bit quicker. But yeah, they, they're not as good as things like the Jag Tiger or the Ferdinand. And I wouldn't say they're as good as the Jag Pan 3 either. So I think you're better off with the SU series. But if you do want to bring the big heavy gun, definitely worth a look. Now we are going to jump straight to the SU 152. So in my opinion, even though it's lighter armor, it don't know. It, it's better designed, in my opinion. And if you look, it's got you know similar weapon systems. It's got armor piercing, high X, but you know it's it's very similar, but without the frontal mounted. But I do prefer it, and it just seems to be a bit better put together, like armor wise, the the sloping on it and how it's built. It's a bit more. I don't know it just it de doesn't seem to get penetrated as much, and I find to have less cook offs in it. But yeah, your mileage may vary. But they're all good choices if you want a big gun. Obviously the SU-100Y, which is the kind of experimental one, this thing is just a monster. This thing has high explosive and armor piercing. Very, very powerful. I don't think you can get it in Conquest yet, actually. I think it's only in Campaign and Multiplayer, but it's still a very, very useful unit. So just going to stress this again, remember, don't use them like tanks. No, no, keep them a bit further back, obviously, like even this one. They have really good range. Well, this one's got that wrong weapon, that's why, you moron. Sorry. <laughs> this one's got really good range. I think it's up to 200. Yep, yeah, two, oh, 220. So, I mean, they have extremely good range, and even the howitzers have really good range. Um, once again, it's got the wrong weapon. Um, but if we get the right weapon, I believe it's about 200. Yep, yeah, so they have very powerful range, very long range support. And I'd say the SU series is definitely worth the investment. If you do need the big guns, obviously bring things like the ISUs, but personally, yeah, you know, an I, um, what is it, IS-2 tank or an IS-1 will be a better option, because it obviously brings the armour and the movable turret. But yeah, definitely think about it, keep them supported, keep them with infantry, especially your SU series. But I think you'll find, especially these three here, are far better than the German counterparts, and I have to admit, the SU is a damn fine looking vehicle. It just, you don't know, it just looks aggressive to me. <laughs> Even though the uh, the gun slit looks a bit, you know, something like an ATST in Star Wars, just an aggressive tank. 
and the speed as well means they're really useful for keeping up that aggression, especially if you need to punch something like the SU-122 forward just to take that quick shot. Anyway, I hope you found, the, um, found this useful. If you have, obviously like, subscribe and leave a comment, and I will see you on the next one. Thanks for watching everyone, and I hope you have a fantastic day.